Genesis just unveiled a brand new all-electric SUV concept ahead of the New York Auto Show, and you won't believe what this thing looks like. I'll show you next. And here it is. This is the Neo Loon concept. It is a full-sized SUV design study that is built on a dedicated EV architecture. And I think the name is pretty appropriate for a vehicle like that. Neo Loon suggests new moon, and that's perfect for a new product such as this. But as you can see, the design is super clean. There is no tacked on trim, no unnecessary creases. They've really reduced the overall shapes and forms of this vehicle to a bare minimum. I mean, just look at how clean the side of the vehicle is of the Neo Loon concept. Absolutely beautifully done. Very nice. I think this vehicle looks fantastic, even though it is a little bit hard to see right now. Obviously, we have that Genesis lighting signature with sort of a V at the bottom, and that, of course, flows along again the fenders with that two-line motif that carries through the sides, and then undoubtedly at the back of the vehicle as well. But things get even more interesting along the sides because you can see we have four doors here, and that incorporates rear hinged suicide doors as I prefer to call them, which of course is not perhaps politically correct. We'll call them coach doors and they open up to a very beautifully done interior. No B pillar there. So you can flow right in and see everything that's there. Also electrically operated running boards to make it a little bit easier to climb aboard this beautiful SUV. The cabin of course is trimmed with purple Napa leather that has been tanned in an ecologically friendly way. At least that's what Genesis says. There are swiveling seats. Those front chairs should turn around to face the back seats as well for a lounge-like experience. More of that purple leather on the door panel here, which looks absolutely beautiful, nicely quilted. We've also got some contrast color stitching up on what appears to be some sort of synthetic suede, but it is hard to tell on camera. Lots of room in here, a gigantic screen on the dashboard again, but that fits with what you would expect for modern vehicles. Matching those electrically deploying running boards, this vehicle is also fitted with pop-up roof rails, so they're there when you want to use them, but otherwise retracted when you don't need them. And of course, that provides a super clean look. You can almost can't even tell that there are roof rails there. Now, if I pull the camera out a little bit, you'll also see the back end of this design study, which again, super reductive, incredibly clean. I think this vehicle looks well, frankly, fantastic from just about every angle. The Neo Loon concept rolls on gigantic 24 inch wheels matching the rest of the body. They do look very clean, almost like a Mercedes Benz monoblock. I think they look fantastic. But now for a bit of bad news. Unfortunately, there's no word whether the Neo Loon will actually enter production. And of course, I don't know what it will cost or when it would ever be available, but this vehicle sure looks and feels like it could be ready for production in pretty short order. And fingers crossed that Genesis actually builds something that looks this sleek. And who knows, this could be a template for an upcoming GV90 or something similar. Are you ready for a high performance, all electric, luxury utility vehicle? Well, whether you are or aren't, the Genesis brand is. And here it is, the GV60 Magma Concept, a vehicle, of course, an all electric model that prioritizes driving fun and based on that paint job, it's hard to argue with that statement. Lots of upgrades to this vehicle, which is a concept at this point. They have improved the aerodynamics, a lot more airflow through the front of this vehicle, much larger openings in the bumper. Plus they've got those three little nostrils just underneath the Genesis badge. Those of course also help improve airflow to keep temperatures in check when you are driving this little SUV in anger. The GV60, of course, is the Genesis brand's very first dedicated EV, and it's nice to see that they're adding a performance model to the lineup. A lot to like here, including those lovely 21-inch wheels, which fill out the wheel openings quite nicely. And you gotta love that design, which of course is aerodynamically tuned, fits nicely with the widened fenders. They've got some vents on the backside as well. I don't know how nicely you can see those, but they are there. 
all about managing airflow around, underneath, and of course, over this vehicle, we have small canards up top that help direct airflow where it needs to go. We can see some careful aerodynamic tuning at the back of this concept vehicle as well. Gigantic wing, complete with little canards on either side. I'm sure those do help the aerodynamics, but they also look pretty cool. Otherwise, fairly standard GV60, which means super clean styling. Genesis spelled out across the rear hatch as well. Overall, quite a handsome vehicle. I don't know that I would want bright orange myself, but I'll tell you, it does look pretty nice on this particular concept vehicle. We can see here they've opened the door. Maybe we can get a, a quick peek in there because there are some special interior upgrades. Beautiful interior, just like other GV60s, though they do have some unique Napa leather trimmings in here, as well as suede and some nice diamond stitching on those seats, which also have a bright orange backrest. But yes, very nice interior on this concept vehicle. They also have not shared any uh, performance figures for this vehicle, though I suspect it will be pretty similar to the Hyundai Ioniq 5N. Those two vehicles are closely related, and of course the N has up to 641 horsepower, an 84 kilowatt hour battery pack, and all that is enough to get you from zero to 60 in roughly three and a quarter seconds, which is certifiably frickin' fast. Yeah, that's, that's pretty quick. So the Genesis GV60 Magma will be among the very first Magma vehicles introduced by the Genesis brand, but unfortunately at this point they are not commenting on pricing, market availability, or performance. So if you want more details about this super exciting all-electric SUV, you're gonna have to stay tuned. All right, check it out. It's the new all-electric 2024 Porsche Macan, and it is on display here at the New York Auto Show. Let's take a closer look. So Porsche is electrifying its lineup, and the next model to go EV is the ever-popular and always enjoyable Macan. Now, this vehicle is offered in two flavors. There's the Macan 4, and then the Macan Turbo, which is what this example happens to be. And a couple giveaways are the unique badging here on the hood. That's mirrored down on the wheels, of course. And then if you still don't believe me, we'll swing around to the rear where it does, in point of fact, actually say turbo. Boom, right there. So curiously, the German automaker is taking sort of a two-pronged approach with this nameplate. The electric Macan is built on a new platform and it will be offered concurrently with the combustion powered model. So it's, it's kind of a fork in the road for this vehicle and Porsche will continue to build gas burning Macans until basically there's no demand for them until the new electric version takes over all of the sales. Now, both EV models have two electric motors and come with all-wheel drive. The Macan 4 delivers up to 402 horsepower and 479 pound-feet of torque, while the turbo here, <laughs> get ready for this, 630 horsepower and 833 pound-feet. As for acceleration, the Macan 4 will go from 0 to 60 in about 4.9 seconds, but the turbo version will do the same deed in just 3.1, which is certifiably crazy quick. That's a technical term. Storing and releasing energy as needed is a lithium ion battery pack with a capacity of 100 kilowatt hours. And as with the Porsche Taycan, this car does have an 800 volt architecture, which allows it to DC fast charge incredibly quickly. This thing tops out at a super impressive 270 kilowatts, though the system can also switch if you're not plugged into a DC fast charger that can manage that level of output. So you do have the flexibility there. Now both the Macan 4 and Macan Turbo can be fitted with an air suspension system and adaptive dampers. Rear wheel steering is also offered, which reduces the turning circle to a relatively curt 36.4 feet. Now, as I mentioned, this vehicle is built on a new platform, which means the wheelbase is about 3.4 inches longer than before. Though I'll say this vehicle still looks like a proper Porsche Macan. Those architectural changes also get you a little bit more interior space. There's 18 cubic feet of room behind the rear seats, as well as 2.9 cubic feet 
in the front trunk. If you fold those rear backrests down, you get nearly 47 cubic feet of room. So the new Macan's interior is just as beautiful as ever because Porsche always does it right. We've got loads of premium materials. The comfort should be very good. And there are plenty of screens. You get a 12.6 inch digital instrument cluster right there. Over on the center of the dashboard is a 10.9 inch central touchscreen. And then there's also an optional 10.9 inch panel on the passenger side of the dashboard. So whoever's riding shotgun, if they get bored playing around with their smartphone, they can tap at that screen as well. Electric versions of the 2024 Porsche Macan are available to order right now. The Macan 4 starts at about $81,000, including $1,650 in destination fees. But if you want the pumped up turbo model, it's gonna cost you a good bit more. They should kick off at about 107 grand. Deliveries are slated to begin later this year. This right here is the 2025 Polestar 3, the premium electric automaker's very first SUV. And this thing promises loads of performance and technology in a very stylish package. Let's take a closer look. So right out of the gate, the Polestar 3 is a very handsome looking machine and it comes with lots of standard equipment. This includes beautiful LED headlamps with automatic high beams. You also get an adaptive air suspension system with adjustable dampers. And of course, 22 inch wheels do come standard on this vehicle as well. There are Brembo brakes with 400 millimeter. That's 15 and three quarter inch front discs for major stopping power. There are rain sensing windshield wipers to make sure you can see where you're driving even in terrible weather. And there are more safety and convenience features in this vehicle than I could ever list in this video. So giving you a sense of size, this vehicle is 193 inches long and it rolls on a wheelbase that is 117 and a half inches. That makes the Polestar 3 about seven inches shorter than a Honda Pilot, though the wheelbase is nearly four inches longer, which gives this thing very attractive proportions. Now, storing energy is a 400 volt lithium ion battery pack that has a gross capacity of 111 kilowatt hours. This pack also features a nickel manganese cobalt chemistry and it comes from CATL, or as I prefer to say, cattle. Moo. Now this, of course, the battery contributes to a weight that tops out at just shy of 5,900 pounds, which is of course a lot, but it's not surprising for an all electric SUV. As for charging, the port, as you can see, is here on the driver's side rear fender. If I open it up, you can get a, a sense of what it's like underneath there. But this vehicle does top out DC fast charging at up to 250 kilowatts, which is a very impressive performance. And it's enough to get you from 10 to 80% in about 30 minutes. So pretty good stats for the Polestar 3 here, at least when it comes to charging. As for range, this vehicle is targeting up to 350 miles on a full charge for the long range dual motor version, though the optional performance pack will reduce that figure to what's estimated at about 279 miles. That options group also includes forged 22 inch wheels. You get special tires to go along with those. There's different chassis tuning. And then of course you get those signature lovely gold accents sprinkled throughout the vehicle. Motivation is provided by a pair of permanent magnet electric motors, which of course gets you standard all wheel drive. They provide 489 horsepower and 620 pound feet of torque, enough to get you from zero to 62 miles per hour. That's a hundred kilometers per hour in about five seconds. Though if you do opt for the performance pack, those numbers increase to 517 horses and 671 pounds of twist, enough to get you from zero to 62 in just 4.7 seconds. But either way, this vehicle's top speed should be 130 miles per hour right across the board. When it comes to versatility, the Polestar 3 offers about 17.1 cubic feet of cargo space in the back here. But if you load this thing all the way up to the ceiling, that it will provide about 21.1 cubic feet of storage space. If you fold those second row backrests down, fold them flat, the overall cargo capacity does increase to just shy of 50 cubic feet. There's also a small front trunk 
that clocks in at about 1.13 cubic feet. As I always say, it's, it's roughly enough for your Chinese takeout. It's really not that large, but it could come in handy in a pinch. This vehicle is also rated to tow up to 3,500 pounds, and you can put 220 pounds up on the roof rack. So looking inside, just like other Polestars, the Polestar 3's cabin is absolutely beautiful. The design is so elegant. The materials are of extra high quality, and overall, I just love the work they've done in this interior. Now, dominating the dashboard is a 14.5 inch center touchscreen. There's also a nine inch digital instrument cluster. Pretty standard stuff in 2024. But what's nice in this vehicle, you get a Google-based infotainment system. So you've got access to the Google Play Store, the Google Assistant, and of course, Google Maps. And I'll tell you, this multimedia array, just like in other Polestar models, absolutely flies. It is super, super responsive and quite intuitive as well. And of course, you also get a wireless phone charger. And then Polestar hasn't forgotten about iPhone users because Apple CarPlay is also supported. So there you go. That is a very quick in-person look at the new 2025 Polestar 3. And I think there's a lot to like about this vehicle and possibly maybe even more to love. Of course, when it comes to pricing, this vehicle starts at about $75,000, including $1,400 in destination fees. But if you go for a top shelf model with the performance pack, you're going to be spending closer to eighty-six dollars So currently this vehicle is built in China, but they are setting up an assembly plant in South Carolina, which of course is very good news. When it comes to availability, these things should start arriving in eager motorists' hands in the second quarter of 2024. Let me introduce you to the Polestar 4. It is a fashion-forward, coupe-like, all-electric SUV that is making its North American debut right here at the New York Auto Show. Now, this company also just announced U.S. pricing for this vehicle, so make sure you stick around for that. So, the Polestar 4 is a coupe-like, all-electric SUV, and it's the automaker's second utility vehicle after the Polestar 3. Now, in terms of size, this vehicle is positioned between the Polestar 2 liftback and the Polestar 3. The overall length is about 190.5 inches, and the wheelbase is 118. The Polestar 4 is, therefore, about 2.5 inches shorter than the Polestar 3, though the wheelbase is actually half an inch longer. Confused yet? I hope not. So, visually, this is a great-looking vehicle, just like other Polestar models. And helping to anchor that styling, we've got wheels that span between 20 and 22 inches. Though, of course, if you opt for the available performance pack, you do get gold-finished calipers, four piston Brembos up front, and those calipers do look pretty nice, peeking out through the wheel spokes. Now, up front, we can see this vehicle has sort of a, well, sort of a dual blade headlight design, something that we have not seen on other Polestar models to date. And in this application, I think it does look pretty nice. Pulling out a little bit farther, you can get a better look at the overall shape of this vehicle. And of course, we also have rain sensing windshield wipers, which are kind of table stakes in the premium end of the market these days. So enhancing aerodynamics for better vehicle efficiency, we have a surprisingly low and almost shark-like nose on the Polestar 4. There are retractable door handles, so when you're driving, those should be very flush with the side of the body. We also have flush-mounted glass and then frameless windows, just like you would get on a coupe. There's a surprisingly rakish roof line, and supposedly, even though this is very stylish, it does not cut into rear seat headroom. And I, I did sneak back there a minute ago, and there is a ton of noggin space in this vehicle. But speaking of the roof, there's also a full-length glass panel. That should be standard on this vehicle, though if you want electrochromic dimming, that is optional. Now, if you're eagle-eyed here, you'll notice that the Polestar 4 actually does not have any back glass at all. That's a filler panel there, and there's a you can see the rooftop right there where there is some glass. And this is a potential problem, I think. It's a controversial decision because, you know, outward visibility is pretty important when you're driving. And in this car, in theory, you can't really see anything. However, they've replaced a traditional rear view mirror with an 8.9 inch HD display that sends a live video feed from a roof mounted camera. It's right up there in the middle 
at the top of the roof. And we've seen this in other vehicles and some people aren't fans of digital rear view mirrors, but I happen to think they work pretty well for the most part. And of course, you know, this is not the first time you can't see out the back of a vehicle, commercial vans, tractor trailers, or even if you've got a conventional car loaded up with cargo, your rearward visibility will be blocked. Now, my initial thoughts, I'm cautiously optimistic about this design element, and I can't wait to test it to see how well that camera system actually works. So in less controversial news, let's talk about specs. Single and dual motor models will be offered with either rear or all wheel drive. Now, the long range single motor version should deliver 272 horsepower and 253 pound feet of torque, which is enough to get you from zero to 60 in around 7.4 seconds and entirely respectable time. But if you opt for the long range dual motor trim, that has 544 horses and 506 pounds of twist, which can get you to the mile a minute speed in just 3.8 seconds, really quick. This car has a 102 kilowatt hour battery pack that should provide more than 300 miles of range in the single motor variant or about 270 in versions that do have all wheel drive. And that battery should AC charge at up to 11 kilowatts while DC fast charging tops out at 200, which should be enough to get you from 10 to 80% in just about 30 minutes. Just like the automaker's other products, the Polestar 4's interior is beautifully designed and loaded with great tech. There's an available Napa leather package, but there's a real emphasis on both sustainable and recycled materials with this cabin. Now, when it comes to screens, there's a 10.2 inch digital instrument cluster right there ahead of the steering wheel and a 14.7 inch head up display that is included with the optional plus pack. Dominating the dashboard is a 15.4 inch screen which should be home to a Google-based infotainment system. More on that in just a second. And then, of course, there's the 5.7-inch rear control screen, which also is included with the Plus Pack. Like I mentioned, there's a Google-based infotainment system that includes the Google Play Store, Google Assistant, Google Maps, and even Apple CarPlay is supported. And if any of Polestar's other vehicles are any indication, this system in the Polestar 4 should be absolutely fantastic incredibly speedy, incredibly responsive, and very easy to use. Now, a 12-speaker Harman Kardon audio system is included with the Plus Pack, but you can also get a 16-speaker sound system if you upgrade to that Napa leather package, which you may want to do, because that sounds pretty nice. You also get an 8-way power driver's seat, or there's a 12-way chair included with that Plus Pack, along with heated rear seats. The 2025 Polestar 4 looks fantastic. It offers some compelling technology, and this thing should be a lot of fun to drive. As for pricing, the base version kicks off at about $56,000, including $1,400 in destination fees, though if you grab the dual motor version, you're going to be spending around $64,000. Now, you should be able to order one of these vehicles starting next month. Pop quiz, what is Hyundai's best-selling nameplate? Well, if you guessed the Tucson, you would be correct. And this SUV has actually been rather significantly updated for 2025, including the hybrid and plug-in hybrid models. So what is new with the Tucson? Well, this vehicle's exterior styling has been massaged. There's fresh tech inside, and engineers even made a few powertrain tweaks. But as you can see, the vehicle still has that distinctive almost diamond faceted bodywork. However, there is a newly designed grille up front. The bumpers front and rear, of course, have been tweaked. And then the DRLs, that's the daytime running lamps, are now comprised of eight individual lighting assemblies opposed to 10, which of course changes the overall lighting signature of the Tucson. Now, beyond that, there are some fresh wheel designs which you can see look pretty handsome on this plug-in hybrid model right here. And then, interestingly, at the back of the Tucson, I kind of think this is cool, but they've increased the length of the rear wiper blade by 75 millimeters. It's actually tucked up underneath that little spoiler. Very difficult to see. It's right, right there. But they've increased it by about 75 millimeters to improve how much of the back glass gets wiped, which of course enhances outward visibility, which is always a good thing. 
So as I just mentioned, there is some news under the hood. As before, a base 2.5 liter four cylinder engine is standard in non-hybrid models, and it writes a check for 187 horsepower and 178 pound-feet of torque. It's also matched to an eight-speed automatic transmission. But the hybrid and plug-in hybrid models, those are on the menu yet again, and they're both anchored by a 1.6 liter direct-injected turbocharged four-cylinder that on its own produces 178 horsepower and 195 pound-feet of torque. This turbo engine is matched to a six-speed automatic transmission. Now, the hybrid also features a 47.7 kilowatt electric motor, which is up from 44.2 in past model years. Throw in a modest 1.49 kilowatt hour lithium ion battery pack, and the standard hybrid drivetrain gets you 231 horsepower and 258 pound feet of torque. But upping the ante, the 2025 Tucson plug in hybrid has a 72 kilowatt electric motor, which is about 97 horsepower. It's an increase over the 66.9 kilowatt dynamo that was offered before. When you throw in a generous 13.8 kilowatt hour lithium ion battery pack, you get a total system output for the plug in of 268 horsepower and 258 pound feet of torque. Now, unfortunately, no no fuel economy numbers have been released, and Hyundai has not provided any range estimates for these vehicles just yet, but the 2024 version of the plug-in is rated at 33 miles on a full charge, and I would expect that to be pretty similar for the updated 2025 model. Beyond that, all hybrid versions of the Tucson, both the standard hybrid and the plug-in, come standard with all-wheel drive. So this Hyundai's interior also received some love for 2025. There's a new curved panoramic display with an available 12.3 inch digital instrument cluster, as well as a standard 12.3 inch touchscreen. Now this vehicle's center stack has also been redesigned and it features physical knobs and switches for frequently used functions. I'm talking about things like the radio volume and tuning, as well as the climate control system. Beyond all of that, higher-end Tucsons also gain a column-mounted shift-by-wire gear selector, something that also frees up additional space down there on the center console. The Tucson is a solid little SUV, and the updates made for 2025 are sure to improve this vehicle even further and will probably help it retain that number one sales position in Hyundai's lineup. Now, unfortunately, pricing has not been announced at this time, but the combustion-powered version of the Tucson is scheduled to go on sale roughly in the June timeframe, though the hybrids will not come out until later in the summer. The new Lucid Gravity SUV could be one of the most important electric vehicles introduced in years. This thing promises huge range, incredible acceleration, it offers vast amounts of interior space, and it should have more amenities than a five-star resort. To learn the ins and outs of this exciting new SUV, Zeb Kokenauer, Senior Manager of Interior Design at Lucid, is going to take us for a walkthrough. Welcome to Lucid Studio in the Meatpacking District. I'm Zeb Kokenauer. I'm an interior design manager at Lucid Motors. Um, I've been with the company for a little over nine years now, and we're excited to share Gravity with you today. Starting with Gravity, we have to talk about a little bit of the history of SUVs and why we ended up with the platform we have. So in the beginning, SUV vehicles were more um, utility-based, uncomfortable to drive, and kind of were built to get the job done. Then into the 90s, you had a little bit more convenience for holding people, but they were often large and cumbersome on the road. Then onto the early 2000s to now, we've had this, the crossover segment. Better on-road capability, but often limited in, in, in space a good bit. So what our, we aim to achieve is a vehicle that has a lot less compromise on a smaller footprint and is overall uh, way more efficient. So starting with the front end design of the vehicle, we have the Lucid Signature Light Blade, something similar to carryover from air, but in gravity, it's a lot, more, a lot more upright and gives the vehicle a more bold appearance and attitude for an SUV, giving it a great strength. Um, and other updates are the DRL and the, uh, the turn signal uh, side markers. These are moved much higher and are more pronounced from the fascia, giving the vehicle better stance. Our high beam uh, has also been moved 
into the same location. You talked briefly about space efficiency. Mm -hmm. Can you speak to the platform and what you guys did to maximize interior room? So just like air, um, we design our space around the technology we have. So the utilization of how small we can make the motor and how we can package the battery of the vehicle, and that kind of sets up the wheelbase of the vehicle. From there, we push the occupants as far, the forward occupants as far forward as possible, rear occupants as far rearward as possible. But in gravity, we get into more of that talking about a seven-seater vehicle and how you package a third row seat. Coming down the side of the vehicle, uh, you can see our signature DNA line that connects the light lens from the front the whole way into the light blade at the rear. We have just one line that connects all features together. A lot of the surfacing really inspired by uh, aeronautics, um, very clean, minimal, and something we see as would be more timeless in the future. It's a very beautiful design. <laughs> Thank you. Onto the cabin shape. So to get very good efficiency, we have a very fast windscreen angle, giving it a lot of speed from side view and a very upright rear glass. And that gives it a very unique proportion on the road that kind of stands out from the crowd. Um, we have our signature clamshell design uh, lift gate opening, which is a similar DNA from air. But not only does this help with some interior aspects of the vehicle, it also allows us to achieve a 0.24 aero uh, drag coefficient. Impressive for such a large vehicle. Yeah, like in, you know, Prius, like the new Prius, for example, is, is higher than that. So for, really? for a vehicle that can hold seven people, it's, it's definitely a great achievement from our That's a lot of time team. in the wind tunnel, right? I mean, yeah. that's, that's a lot of sweating the details to yeah, achieve our, that. Our exterior design team and the uh, aerodynamics team, they work very closely day by day getting this refined to the point where it's at. A lot of different studies on where the spoiler needs to be and how the diffuser is designed. They did many variations of this in the wind tunnel. We have our signature light blade, but this time in gravity, it is a fully exposed light blade, so there's no cover lens. Mm. That way you can see the detail of all of the different ribs and the, the uh, different details we carry throughout the car to make a theme. So even the, the similar detail, uh, you can find places in the interior as well. Not only does the clamshell design help with aerodynamics, it also helps us to achieve a very low, low, low load floor height um, with, to help with cargo and maximum capacity of the trunk. So here you can see just how low this can be for a seven passenger SUV. And this is in nominal ride height for the air suspension. Mm -hmm. And um, surprisingly roomy behind the third row as yeah. well. That's a, that's a good amount of space lengthwise. Mm -hmm. yeah. So we, d we designed the rear to have a lot of space even when seven people are in the vehicle and also that when the third row is stowed, it's pretty much invisible. You can drive the car every, every day in a five-seater configuration and only pull the third row seat out when you need it. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about the wheels and the stance of the vehicle. So for gravity, we have a staggered wheel setup. So the front wheel is a 22-inch wheel and the rear is a 23. Not only does this help with giving the vehicle a great presence and attitude on the road, but it also helps with aerodynamics. Really? What, what, how does that help aerodynamics? The different frontal space of the vehicle. So you get a smaller frontal uh, coverage of air and the rear's you know, away from that, so it spaces it out. Gotcha, gotcha. Off to the side here, we have the Lucid Air platform. The gravity rides on a different architecture, but I would imagine they're pretty similar. So it's a similar setup in like the theory of how we build the platform. Mm -hmm. But for instance, in Air, this battery pack, to get our extra uh, stack of battery packs for range, we do that under the bench seat. In gravity, we do that under the first row seat because in an SUV you have a higher H point, the seats are often on, on risers, so we use that space to stack the battery packs. So very similar but important differences. In a different, in a different position. Because that, why start from a clean sheet when you've got something that's already that exactly. efficient and good? And, right? and not only moving that battery pack to the, fr to the bottom of the front seats helps with the storage of the battery, but also gives you incredible third row uh, legroom. So we can't discuss Lucid without discussing frunks. Uh -huh. It's our big thing. We're pride and joy of how we package all our components in the vehicle. And like with the large frunk in air, that is a mostly carpeted frunk for extra cargo. But in gravity, it's very large, but it's completely washable. And we see that it, this is a great feature for the SUV market. Consider this your dirty storage, your muddy boots, your sandy wetsuit, 
You put that in here, you can go to the car wash when you're done, and you can power wash the frunk off Very and nice. it drains out the bottom. Very nice. And it's a nice place to sit as well, right? Exactly. So let's get into our yeah. favorite accessory. So something we see with tailgating and the trend of hanging out by your car in nature, watching sunsets or camping, what have you, um, we've created our frunk seat. And our frunk seat will be an accessory we offer, and it's designed to, to fit in here and be used for casual, uh, whatever kind of events you're coming up with. And we also designed, um, while you're sitting here, full comfort, like mem memory foam. Um, we also have cup holders in the frunk. How nice. So, while you're relaxing. <laughs> That's perfect. Yeah. And probably a good segue to the interior yeah, as well. Yeah, so. Let's do it. So now we're in the front cabin of gravity. This is really my pride and joy as an interior design manager for this. Um, a lot of work went into designing the space, but the first key thing we have to look at is the Clearview cockpit. Mm. So we are world's first OLED screen layout completely unobstructed by the steering wheel. We work closely together with ergonomics, safety team, uh, interior engineers to move the screen as high as possible without blocking road view mm -hmm. and moving the steering wheel as low as possible while not covering up the, the screen with the wheel. But not only did we move it down here, we also put a lot of work into the shape of the wheel. So it's still a full steering wheel. Mm -hmm. So it's really good for uh, mountain driving roads, hand over hand control. Um, yeah, key is to be in full control, but also have all this information. So this is one seamless OLED screen touch display. Um, the, the instrument cluster here has car controls on the left, similar to air, but this time they are dynamic. So you don't need all these car controls all the time. Mm -hmm. um, so while driving, they'll slide away to be a little bit more invisible. Because you're not going to open the frunk on the freeway, exactly. probably. Frunk and trunk, normally yeah. not opened on the freeway. <laughs> Then uh, you have your ADAS, Speedo, and all that in the center. And then we go to the right side of the IC, and this is more passenger, passenger and shared controls. Mm -hmm. This is all your media. And now we have these tiles. So you can swipe through different tile apps, and you can select which apps you want up here and really customize it. We still have, you can slide through to navigation, media, phone, and even in uh, like music, you can slide through all of your uh, Spotify albums. But another new benefit with Gravity is the steering wheel control design. Mm -hmm. So we have these new switches that are capacitive touch. So now you can decide whether you want to use touch screens or use the steering wheel controls to find what you're looking for. So these will be a swipe operation and exactly how you would want them to work. It's left, right, up, down, press, and that will send you through these different tiles. Other automakers have run into some problems with their, their touch sensitive controls in the past. What have you guys done to prevent that? So we're working closely with some great suppliers on this technology, but it's really how we use the capacitive technology. Mm. We're not using it to drag a cursor around the screen to yeah. point and pick certain things. We're using it the same way you would use your finger, which you don't slide your finger around the screen. You quickly swipe through options while driving. Mm -hmm. So it'll be the same interaction. So you can decide if you want to control it that way or with your hands or the mm -hmm. passenger can control it. Another feature kind of carry over from air is our tiles sliding into the drawer of the CID design. So now you can slide your navigation and down and that comes into the central control screen. Mm -hmm. So here you can also customize. If I want my media up here, I'm playing my Spotify and navigation down here, that is an option. Or I can do the opposite and I could run media here, navigation here. Mm -hmm. And I can run them at the same time. How did you swipe that? I, I didn't quite see it. So what is the, what's the trick? It's swiping down. Okay, oh, it's and just literally just swiping yeah. down. So when you, and same with the steering wheel control, when you slide left or right, it'll be doing the same action I'm doing okay. here. And whichever one you want to pick, you just slide that tile down and it immediately shows up here. Gotcha. So say the passenger wants to search for the next destination, you swipe it down here, they can access that while I can still pick what album I want to listen to. That's a 34 inch screen if memory serves on the yes. dashboard? Yes, OLED. Yeah. yeah, an OLED. So the very dark blacks, very bright colors. Very dark blacks. Uh, in gravity, we have detox mode. And in detox mode, we can make all these features go away, and the beauty of an OLED screen is you get the blackest black, so you can literally drive around with just the speedometer 
in front of you. So at night, long, late night drives, you mm -hmm. don't want all this distraction of light in your face, this could all go away. It's Friday, you've had a long, hard week exactly. at the office and you're yeah. mentally done. <laughs> you've <laughs> That's it. engaged that mode and, and free yourself of distractions then. So also getting into that same kind of situation, we've added a sanctuary mode to the vehicle. So we have something called Lucid Spaces. And imagine you get home from work or you're pulling off the road because you just had a long day and you want to take a little relaxation or while charging. Mm -hmm. We have these different moments in the vehicle um, that can kind of get you out of the city and place you in some of your favorite places. And this, this can be updated through the lifetime of the car. So we will have different updates to location. Currently, these are the, this is, these are the options we have. So this is Santa Monica. Mm. And not only does this experience go with just the screens, but also with the animated lighting through the front of the cabin. So what, you would use this while parked or yes. something to yes. sort of just relax? Exactly. Clear your mind. Mm -hmm. Very nice. That's very immersive too. Yeah, and the clarity you get out of this wraparound OLED screen that's seamless is, is very impressive. Aside from the technology in this SUV, the design inside is beautiful as well. Uh, talk to me about the challenges of doing that. We see a lot of automakers with very busy designs these mm -hmm. days. It's like the team doesn't know when to put the pencil down and sort of st step away, right? Yeah. How so do you deliver that? For Lucid, even from when we started Air, um, we really look into California landscapes for inspiration. And I know that comes off as like, well, you're not putting trees in the car, right? <laughs> but um, we look at landscapes and we look at different types of locations in California. Um, key for me is the light and dark you see throughout landscapes and lighting. Mm -hmm. So we use a lot of waves and these type of elements throughout the vehicle to accentuate the space for the occupants. Mm -hmm. So you can see in the doors, we push the door package to be as thin as possible at the IP connection, and that allows the IP to be as wide as possible. This enhances the space and width and the perception of space for the consumer. Mm -hmm. We also have this wraparound architecture that carries our CMF themes around the front occupants, kind of encapsulating them in this cozy front end cabin. Mm -hmm. Um, then even on to our details, um, we have these all natural woods and we still have physical controls. Very important. Combination of physical controls and really nice craftsmanship in the areas that you touch is very important for our DNA. Mm -hmm. um, we also minimalize the location of areas you touch. So doors alone, you have window switches, door trigger, or door release in the same location. And when you touch that area, we make sure they have the highest quality materials in that location. Mm. That way we don't have to put things that feel good in areas that you don't normally touch. It's a very nice way of organizing this quiet luxury style that we have. You mentioned physical controls a moment ago. Mm -hmm. um, I think part of the problem people have with, with touch screens and sometimes with, with touch sensitive controls is, is a bit of lag. It's just not quite a one-to-one. -one. Yes, understood. Um, how do you minimize that when you're designing these? So we point out the, the physical controls that you use most of the time, mm. at the highest frequency. And we want those to be physical because the risk of lag, right? So steering wheels, still physical controls. We have all your controls for media and uh, ADAS and cruise control still have stocks, the rate where you need them, the rate where you remember them to be. Um, and like our wipers, our control from the left stock to here is very close, so you keep that same understanding of this is my quick wiper control, but here's my deep dive. Mm -hmm. um, onto these controls, so un just like air, we have our temp and fan controls, which are something I use every day, and I don't want to take my eyes off the road while using them. So while driving, I can reach down and I know exactly where they are at all times. Same with the volume roller, but additionally, in gravity, now that we've moved the center screen up and made it landscape for more media options, we've added two customizable physical controls. So now your favorite controls, you can decide what you want these to be. So this could be glove box, this could be air suspension, ride right mm -hmm. height. Very, so nice. very important feature for us to keep throughout all the Lucid vehicles. 
a couple great stories in the second and third rows of seats in this vehicle, but before we get to that, I wanted to ask you, what about sustainable materials? What are you guys doing in that area? So sustainable materials, we have options for, even our leather is, is from the best option out there where they use the, all of the animal um, in, the, in the greatest way as possible, but mm -hmm. then into all our synthetic materials, they're fully recyclable, same with our woods, all natural. For the design of gravity, we looked into mid-century modern furniture, and our biggest tie-in for that is the center console. Mm. So when we did the console design, we were looking at, do we do open consoles? Do we do high center consoles? And basically it came down to how, un understanding how the user uses the space. Mm -hmm. So this is kind of our space within a space concept of the interior. So we decided on a high center console the mid-century tie-in is our coffee table design. This is a glass, a tempered glass uh, cover for the center console, so you can hide all your storage when you're out of the vehicle. This slides forward to show off our tray. So first is our tray. This holds key fob and pens, cup holders, and full charging mat for two phones or AirPods, anything like that. Not only is these, are these the typical conveniences you expect to see in a vehicle, but being lucid, we optimize the space underneath. <laughs> so this slides forward, and when you see this opened up, you can utilize all of this space throughout wow. the console. And we'll offer these bento boxes as accessories. And the benefit of these is this fits like a Stanley cup or a large Yeti thermos. So the setup for that option, we've even designed that you can have your phone in this position. You can have a larger drink and the armrest closed at the same time. Look at that. And that's so low that your large drink is still below the armrest line, not to impede your access to the physical controls. It's like you guys thought of this and then tested it first. Many, many times. <laughs> <laughs> many variations. Very thoughtful. Very Thanks. thoughtful. All right, now coming into the second row of gravity. So this is our bench seat option for gravity. And you have a lot of leg room here. Not only do you share that space um, with the third row, but because of our track design, you can really optimize leg room for first row, second row, and third row. A great new feature for, for Lucid is our answer to rear screen entertainment. And for that, we call it bring your own device. So new in gravity is our rear seat table design. So we've decided that the best option is having people to bring their own device. So now we have these tables built into the back of the seat. You can place laptops here, iPads, and you have USB-C charging in the back of the seat. <laughs> That's perfect. Show me the mechanism. That was pretty yeah. slick. It's a four bar connection. Oh, wow. Right into the seat. That's, that's brilliant. I like that. What's yeah. the rationale of not having separate screens? Is it that your own devices are going to be more up to date and more yeah, familiar? Yeah, so the way we see it is you know, people update the devices sometimes twice a year, right? So. To, to keep up with that, our answer to that is just having a way to connect that device to the vehicle. So think we will have apps that kind of mirror what goes on in the center screen that the passengers can have the same amount of control. Not only can they do that with their screen, but we also have an OLED screen on the back of the center console for extra controls of HVAC and seat controls. And also lots of leg room in the second row. Yes. Headroom, and I'm sure the, the H point is pretty high as well. Yeah, tons of legroom and t tons of headroom, um, but really optimized to, you'll see when we get into the third row, what we could achieve by optimizing this. We've really optimized this space with the motor design, the packaging. I mean, this is shrink wrapped right around that uh, technology. And then behind here is the area, the third row seat goes behind the, the motor bay. Our leg room's really optimized. I'm 5'8", I have tons of space in front of my legs and a good, good amount of space above the head. So this area is definitely optimized for aerodynamics, but I think we hit the, the great middle point uh, for interior and exterior. Not only do you have a, a good bit of space in the third row, but you have a lot of amenities. So armrests, you have some phone storage or any type of storage you want up here. We have a USB-C cup holder and uh, HVAC 
uh, ventilation for the third row occupants. Everything you need. Exactly. Everything you need for a long road trip in the third row. Yeah. Was it difficult to integrate a third row into this vehicle that's adult friendly, adult sized? V very difficult, but I would say, you know, 80% of our focus was the, the occupant package of getting the third row perfectly to fit uh, in this vehicle. Not only to, it's not only important for the size of the occupant to sit here comfortably, but how it stows away behind the motor bay. So you can really drive it as if it doesn't have a third row at all. When you've got both rows folded, how much cargo space is there? Um, the exact dimension, I can't quite remember right now, but I know an eight and a half foot surfboard fits diagonally. Okay. And you can also fit like two mountain bikes. We have a bunch of different accessory sets up, set up for when the second row is folded flat and the third row is stowed in the trunk. So as the interior designer, what was the biggest challenge in working on this vehicle and what are you most proud of? The biggest challenge is I'd say a day-to-day -day challenge in how to optimize packaging with engineering and design. Um, but we do that from front of the cabin to the rear of the cabin. That's my passion. I love doing that with the team. Um, the most exciting thing for me, like getting the OLED screen for the screen housing, you can see just how thin that housing is for the magnesium casting. Um, the floating screens, the physical details, we put a lot of love into that. And finally, the glass center console coffee table. I mean, first one to market with glass in production. It really brings the, uh, the class of the vehicle up another notch. Awesome. Well, thank you very much, Zeb. I appreciate this very detailed walk around. Thank you. There is so much to be excited about here, except perhaps for one thing, and that is the weight. This new Lucid is not expected to go on sale until the end of this year. When it does arrive, however, it should start at less than $80,000.